Hi, in this Unity tutorial, I plan to demonstrate how we could combine meshes to make one mesh out of multiple meshes. And what's happening here in this picture is this is an example of me doing that. I have a, a game object, my mesh, and the mesh, everywhere I click, adds another cube. Okay, so the cubes are being added, but it still remains one mesh. Um, now, why would I want to do that? The reason I want to do that is to optimize the rendering in Unity. For example, let me turn on the stats here. And here we have this thing in graphics called batches. And right now the number is 9. If I were to add cubes to my scene, like this prefab I have over here, with every cube I add, you can see the batches count is increasing. 21, 27, 33. The higher the batches count, basically the more the renderer has to work. Because it's going to actually, I think it, what it's doing is it's rendering each one of these objects in a pass instead of all of them in one pass it has a bunch of passes for each object and you know this is a very few amount of game objects so in a game when there's like a lot of objects this number will keep getting larger and larger so one way to keep my game fast is for game objects that are similar to batch them together to be rendered one time so what i did here is first let me remove all these extra cubes i just added in is I have a script that I wrote. Um, well, I have two scripts, actually. The camera script is here, so I can move around my object. When I press play, I could click on a side, and the cubes get added in. But I also could move around. I could hold my mouse wheel down and just move my mouse to move around and click on different sides of this object. You know. Since it happens at runtime, I had to make a script to control the camera to do that. Okay, so the script for the camera, let me just show you that really quickly first, is my camera move script, and it's really small. You know, I use the Unity engine, and this is just an enum for when I'm reading the mouse, the left, right, and middle mouse buttons, they each have a number associated with the button, so I just made an enum. Then over here I have the scroll speed, like how fast the um, scene is going to scroll when I move my mouse around. And the turn speed, oh well, actually the scroll speed is for how fast the zooming in and out is. I didn't show you, but I could zoom in and out over here with the mouse wheel. So how fast the zooming in and out happens, that's the scroll speed. Dun, 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 dun. Right here, scroll speed. And then turn speed is how much movement happens when I just drag my mouse when I'm holding the middle mouse button. So that's what these two variables are. And then the rotate center is me telling the camera what to rotate around. As you can see here, when I'm moving around, it's rotating around something. So I get to tell it what I want it to rotate around by just dragging and dropping that object. And this object here, that will be the center of what I keep spinning around. Okay, so that's just a nice little script there. Those are the variables. This is the way the script works. Here is a update function. So I check to see if you scrolled the mouse wheel, right? And if you scrolled the mouse wheel, then y is not zero. If you scrolled the mouse wheel, then what I will do is I will take this. This is the camera because I attached this script to the camera and I'm going to move the camera either forward or backward depending on which way I scrolled the mouse by that speed and that time. I just move the camera forward and backward along its line and that's basically like zooming in and out. See if I scroll forward I get closer the camera as you can see here gets closer. If I scroll the other way the camera gets further and that's zooming in and out. Then over here I have the movement the rotating around so um, it's a two-step thing. I have to press down the middle mouse button, right? So I check to see if the middle mouse button is true. 
And then I get the MX and the MY. This is the mouse X and Y axis, like whatever movement I have done on the X and the Y. The value is here in the MX and MY, and that could be values from minus 1, 0, or all the way up to plus 1. You know, there's a lot of values in the middle there from minus 1 to 1. So then what I do is um, I rotate around two axes. So for the X, I rotate around the down axis right here. See, this is the Y. So for X, I'm rotating around the Y. If I move my mouse left and right, it rotates around the Y. And then I rotate around the X axis. If I move my mouse up and down, it rotates around the X axis. Now what's rotating, you can see it's the camera that's moving, not my game object. It's just the camera moving around, looking around from different positions, but staying focused on the center. Okay, this is the rotating around the X and this is rotating around the Y. Um, if you want to flip the direction you rotate, you just got to change from right to left or up to down. Or you can just use this and it'll work just the way I just demonstrated here. And then um, when I'm rotating around the X and the Y, I kind of want the Z to stay zero. So what happens kind of sometimes in, when I'm rotating around, I want the Z to stay zero. If I don't have this line over here where I take the angles that the current rotation is and zero out the Z, uh, I guess I'll comment it out and show you what happens if I don't have this line. And I'm going to have to start. Let me save it and just start the code again. Read the script, read the script, and then start over again. Okay, let me just add something there. And now without that Z thing, I'm rotating around. Um, but now it kind of, see how Z keeps changing? And now say I just want it to go up and down, left and right. Uh, depending on how off the Z gets, it could get a little messy. So I keep things like locked in on the Z. Otherwise, I can never... It's very hard for me to get back to my straight thing, so that's why I just locked in the Z with this here. And that's um, that's my script to move the cameras around. It's real small. So I just drag and drop this onto the camera object, and I could move the camera around. If you want to get a copy of the script, just go to omarvision.com and look on the tutorials page and just look for this video there on the tutorials page. It has all the scripts. All right, so now that I have that thing that can move the camera around, I'm going to have the thing where there's another script here on the mesh object. It's uh, the mesh combiner that every time I click on a side, it adds another shape there. Okay, so this is the mesh combiner script, and it takes a prefab that it's going to add. So I showed you with a cube that it adds a cube everywhere I click, and it's running, and click, click click and it just adds a cube on those sides. How does it do that? And the cube could be um, another shape. For example, I could have my prefab shape be a sphere. And then I could do the same thing. It's just basically taking the side that I click on and it adds my prefab shape on that side. Okay. So let me just put it back to the cube. And then it needs to know <clears throat> It needs to know what the camera is because when I'm clicking on the cube, um, the camera is used in the calculation to know where I clicked on the mesh. All right, so I give it a pointer to the camera. Now let's look at the script. Here is the script. I'm very zoomed in. I'm sure you guys could appreciate if I zoom out a little bit more. So this is the script. Again, I'm using the mouse for the clicking. So I just have this little noom here. It's private with the mouse buttons as a name instead of just a number. Um, these are those two public objects. I can tell it what shape to keep adding and I need to point to the camera. And here is the update function. All right, so what it waits for is for me to do a left button click. I click with my left button on the mouse. And when I do that, it's going to create a ray from the camera into the scene. So conveniently, the camera is right here. Every time I'm looking at the game, the camera is literally where I am seeing, you know? So 
Is this in play? Yes, it's in play. Let's see if I highlight the camera. The camera is always where I am looking, you know? So what I want is I do want a line from the camera into the scene and see where do I hit when I click the mouse, if I click the mouse here. All right, so I make that ray from the camera into the screen with this function to where in the screen where I put the mouse. And then I need a hit object. This is gonna get me all the hit information. And then I use physics ray cast. I cast a ray and I give it the out variable to see what it hits. This number is optional. This number is how many units do I scan the ray forward for. I could scan it for infinite. And I could just leave that number out or I could scan it for 10 or 100 or whatever. So, you know, the smaller I make this number, the closer I'm going to have to be for the click to pick up. So say if the number's 100, and let's see if I can get far enough away that when I click on it, oh, I'm still close enough, go even further. But basically, like in Minecraft, you know, when you're playing the game, you have to be close enough to hit the brick. So that number there for the raycast to see how far I hit, this, this would be a control for that. Anyway, so it casts the ray into the scene, sees what it hits, it puts all the information in this hit variable. So now this hit variable has the information like, for example, exactly what did I hit and where in the scene 3D space that I hit something. And then the thing that I hit, it probably has sides to it, right? Like, you see, there's a side here, there's sides here. And um, you see these little triangles that are being drawn out here. I don't know if it's easy to see, but there's triangles there. If I just go wireframe mode, right, every object has a triangle. And that triangle has a thing called the normal which points away from the triangle so that we know how much light to put on that side. So the normal is basically, I'm going to use that to tell me what side do I want to put an object, right? So if I click on this side here, right here, it's going to put a cube, boom, on that side. The normal was pointing that way, and that's where I put an object. If I click over here, the normal is going to be pointing this way, and I put an object there. So I'm going to use the normal to help me know where to put a new cube. So... Um, the only thing is the normal, I guess, is in a unit of one. And my cubes, the size of them, or the shapes, the size of them is size of one. So the position for the new cube that I click, I don't want it to actually be one. I want it to be um, halfway in over here. Okay, so that I'm going to divide it by, I'm going to divide it in half. Or another way to divide by half is to multiply by 0.5. So the normal is like a unit of one, and I just divide it by half to get the middle of that new space, boom, that the cube would be added to. All right, so now I have that new position, and now I just have to make sure that that new position is dead center in that middle space. So to make sure it's dead center in the middle space so all the cubes are uniformly placed in, then I just do this math here. And to tell you the truth, I just got this math from the um, holistic uh, 3D one of her videos to round off the point to make sure it's just exactly in the center of a unit. So this is using not the math F from Unity, but system.math from C Sharp. So I take the math F round function and I round off the position X and I have to use this variable here, midpoint rounding away from zero. And this takes care of in case if my numbers go into the negative. So, you know, like I said, I kind of got this from Holistic 3D's website and her YouTube video. And I'm using it and it works. So, hey, thanks. So now I got to point directly in the direction where I want to add a cube or a shape. So then here I actually add a shape to my scene. I instantiate the prefab. Okay, at that position with, you know, a zero uh, rotation. And now I got the shape. So I just make the shape, um, the parent of the shape, I make it the, the game object. I make it my, my mesh game object. Why am I going to do that? I'll tell you why. Because um, right after I make the new shape that I added have its parent be the my mesh object, I'm going to combine the shape. 
All right, so the combining the shape again is so that I could keep adding shapes and the batch count doesn't go up since they all will be part of the same mesh. The batch count stays at nine no matter how many I'm adding. All right, so to do that, I have a special little combine function right here. So here's the combine function. So first off, uh, of course, I pass it the new shape that I just added. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy the mesh collider on my mesh object. So my mesh object has a mesh collider. This is kind of what's detecting me clicking on stuff. Okay. So I'm going to be changing the mesh. So first I'm going to destroy the mesh collider. And then to combine the meshes, I kind of, I need to get all the meshes together into an array so that I could tell Unity to combine the meshes into one. So the array I'm going to get them into is an array of combined instance objects, structures. All right. So first I find out how many meshes I have on my game object, including the children. Then I make this array that big. And then I loop through all the meshes I got from the mesh filters and I add them to the combine. Okay. So the combine object, it is a, an object. So there's a dot mesh component of that structure, which I add the shared mesh. And there's a transform component that says where the mesh is. And I add that. I have to translate it, of course, from the local coordinates to the world space. And that's just talking about, all right. So, you know, if you look at this game object here, um, locally, the game object is one. Um, but if I look at where it's from, from the original object was here, that's over there, you know. So anyway, I have to do a conversion. So that's the local to world. And um, this, I just set the game object to false for a minute. And then I increment and get the next mesh. So all the meshes are going to be added to this array combine. And now with all the meshes added to combine, um, I'm going to get my mesh filter this guy right here that holds the mesh, I'm going to get a pointer to that. Then I'm going to say the mesh filter mesh equals a new mesh. All right. Cause I'm going to take this information and make a new mesh. And the new mesh is going to be the combined meshes of this combine array. And what does this true mean? Let's find out. Let's put this little thing there. Merge sub meshes. True. Now, after I, this combined meshes takes um, the new meshes and the old and combines them into one. I recalculate the bounds of the mesh so that the shape of the mesh is now the new shape, including that new shape I added. And then I recalculate the normals, you know, so the light shines the right way on each side. And then there's this nifty little thing here called optimize to make sure we're drawing this mesh as fast as possible. Unity has this optimize function. All right, so now I got this new mesh in there. Great. Um, I still want to be able to click on the mesh, so I'm going to have to re-add the mesh collider that I took out up here in the top. I re-add that mesh collider, and when I re-add it, it's going to use the new mesh to make a collider from. That's great. And then I could set my game object back to active. Okay, so here it's kind of deactivated. Basically, it's not going to draw itself, then it's figuring out the new mesh, the new collider, and now I set it back to active so it draws itself in the scene. Great, all that stuff is done. Now this shape that I passed in has been added to the mesh of my game object. It's been added to it, so I don't need the shape anymore, so I destroy the shape. And um, there we go, that's what's going on here every time I click this. So that's how the mesh combine function works. And I don't think I have anything else to say about that. Later.